Hey girls and girls, welcome back to my channel. Happy first day of fall. Today is going to be a very special reading vlog because it's the first day of fall. It's the official first day of fall, September 23rd. And to celebrate, I am holding a 24 hour reading marathon for myself just to celebrate the start of my favorite season. It's about 9.30 a.m. as I am filming this. So my plan is to read as much horror and spooky adjacent books that I can between 10 a.m. today and then 10 a.m. tomorrow. The timing lined up actually pretty perfectly. It's a perfect day for me to just sit and see how much I can read in the span of 24 hours. I am so excited about it. Um, just, you know, diving into, diving into some horror books, maybe some dark academia books. I'm really excited just to see how much I can read throughout the next day. So I don't really have a set TBR. I did find some books that I own physically that are kind of on the shorter end, um, which, you know, 300 pages or less, um, just so I can, you know, get through multiple things in this readathon. I also am going to utilize Libby and Libro FM, and I'm going to try and have like five hours be the max of an audiobook to try and listen to. There's no set TBR. I can read as much or as little as I want from any specific book. I do have some books that I have planned, but not really any guidelines, which is exciting. I have my Horror Readers shirt only shirt on. I have some pajama pants that I bought from Target um, that are very spooky, festive, seasonal, Halloween-y. So we're just gonna have a really good day. Um, and I am gonna go get started, get set up before the clock hits 10 and then the timer will be going and I will be starting 24 hours of reading horror books. I am so excited. I cannot wait. Let's get into the vlog. Let's do a little bit of a reading update. We have my leaves candle burning in the background. Fresh new candle. Leaves is one of my all-time favorite scents, like point blank period. And um, I had one that was unused. I hadn't burnt it yet. I saved it, especially for this readathon. So even though the temperature is not cooperating and it's almost 90 degrees outside, we've got leaves burning. We have AC in here. We're gonna stay put and we're gonna keep reading some spooky horror things. As you can see, time check, it's 11.55 a.m. and I am currently reading Dark Harvest. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this one. I've heard that this like feels so quintessentially fall, takes place I think during Halloween. Um, so Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. And this is about a town that has a very strange ritual that involves all of the boys 
in this small town. Um, so Halloween 1963, they call him the October Boy. Whatever the name, everybody in this small Midwestern town knows who he is. How he rises from the cornfields every Halloween, a butcher knife in his hand, and makes his way towards town, where gangs of teenage boys eagerly await their chance to confront the legendary nightmare. Both the hunter and the hunted, the October Boy is a prize in an annual rite of life and death. So, um, yeah, I'm about 20% of the way through that one. This one was an audiobook that was only five hours long. I am enjoying it. I pretty much started, um, like, I pressed play right at 10 when I started the readathon and while I got, like, my room and my reading set up ready, everything like that. So, interesting start. Um, I think this one's going to be very, very creepy, kind of slushery. I did grow up in a Midwestern small town, so I'm very excited to see if like that fall ambience transfers from the book pages to like my nostalgia that's going to be very interesting to see and then secondly i also picked up because i like having a physical book and an audiobook um actually an arc that i got when i used to work at the library this comes out the third of october this is called let him in by william friend and this is following um i'm only 20 pages into this one so far but i'm intrigued this is you know creepy little kid Kid, imaginary friend horror which I really love it's about a man named Alfie whose wife has recently passed away and his twin daughters start seeing this imaginary friend start having nightmares this imaginary friend might be something a little bit more um, than just an imaginary friend so I'm excited to read this one as well I don't really have too much to say about it because again I'm on page 20 but it's short enough where I feel like um, I'll definitely be able to finish it today so those are my two books that I'm starting this readathon off with feeling good so far just wanted to give a quick little update on the books that I am starting with and I'm gonna go get to reading I'll talk to y'all later Okay, quick little time check. It is now 3.33 and I have finished my first book. I finished Dark Harvest and I have to say, I think, you know, it was probably a good start to this readathon just in terms of reading a very Halloween-y book. Um, this is only 160 something pages, so this could be a really good book if you're looking for a one and done that you want to read in a single day on Halloween maybe. Um, or or just like you know a fall day that you have time to sit down and you want to read a full story this one definitely um i felt like from start to finish we really just followed the events that were occurring um i think more action driven than character driven um and it is a premise i've kind of seen um a lot before in terms of horror and i've already given the synopsis on it but it really really reminded me of the lottery um and then also a little bit like children of the corn um so i enjoyed it it was a solid read um definitely i think this is one where maybe the hype <laughs> got to me because i did enjoy my time reading it i wouldn't necessarily say it's a particularly like atmospheric book you can definitely tell that it takes place in the fall um, but it's not like it doesn't it doesn't feel like fall it doesn't evoke fall like when I am listening to if I put on the exorcist theme song for example on um, like the beautiful tubular bells or their piano versions that are really pretty as well when I listen to that I like see in my mind's eye I see leaves like swirling through the air like swirling on the ground you know dropping from trees to the ground I like smell fall in the air um that's what like fall atmosphere like I need a book that when I'm reading it like I can I can smell fall I can feel like I'm actually like in a time 
own place. I didn't get that for this one, but um, I did enjoy my time with it. Um, if you like slashers, if you like small towns with dark secrets, you might want to check this one out. But first book of the readathon done. Walked on the treadmill a little bit just to kind of give me something to do while I was listening to the audiobook. Um, and then I ate some Banza protein vegan mac and cheese because um, I couldn't kind of figure out what I wanted. I wanted something comfy for lunch, but I didn't want something that was like outrageously decadent. So I settled for the middle ground there. Yes, it was mac and cheese, but it's also protein pasta. So, you know, I figure there's a balance there. Um, but I am currently reading. Let him in by William Friend. I am only on chapter four, but um, I'm enjoying it. Nothing groundbreaking so far. We're definitely setting up the supernatural. We're still in the point where the adult figures think it's just a coping mechanism or an imaginary friend for these two young girls. And it's just starting to maybe seem like maybe there's something a little more sinister than just an imaginary friend at play. So um, yeah. So like I said, I'm on page four. So that is page 50 of 222. So this will be my primary physical book. Um, since I did finish my audiobook, I am going to be picking out another audiobook and I thought for this one, maybe pick out one that I have a physical copy of and I can also read via audiobook. And then I thought, you know, first day of autumn, horror reading vlog, let's pick up the Stephen King. And the Stephen King that I settled on is from A Buick 8 um, for a couple of reasons. This audiobook was available without a wait at my library, so instantly could check it out. And it was also the shortest one that I had a physical copy of that was also available via audio at the same time. So I'll probably listen to this via audio. It is a longer audiobook. It's about 13 hours, but um, this book is not... Sorry, I just I just found a poster inside of um, my copy. Um, love buying used books. Okay, and this one's 350 pages, and I actually have not heard a lot about this one. I don't know what the synopsis is. I'm going to guess that maybe it has to deal with a haunted car. Um, and you know, I did really love Christine, so I'm sure this does not hold a candle to Christine, um, just based on the fact that a lot of people talk about Christine. I don't hear a lot of people talking about from a Buick 8, so um, yeah. Going ahead and adding a shorter shorter. I mean, for Stephen King, a 300 page book is pretty much unheard of nowadays, but um, adding a shorter book to the TBR. So I am going to be reading this in tandem. Um, I'll probably listen to it on audio until I finish this one, and then I'll pick up the physical book. Um, some very, very white books here that are kind of messing the lighting situation up a little bit, but um, I'm going to keep reading these. And first book down of the readathon. We're doing great on time. I'm having a fun time. My pups are both napping right now, so um, I'm really gonna try to not cuddle up with them and get sleepy. So yeah, I'm gonna, gonna go get to reading and I will talk to you all in a couple more hours.
time check it is 9 4 p.m and i finished the second book of this readathon um unfortunately this was very much a miss for me um and i think it's just because it had a lot of tropes that i really love so my standards of like books and movies and things that i'm comparing it to um like it's a little skewed because a lot of my favorite media has these kind of paranormal hauntings creepy little kid tropes um so pitting this up against some of my favorite books and movies and tv shows um it was it was hard going in it was engaging it capped like my focus i wanted to find out what happened until something happened that is a trope that i absolutely do not like and um without spoiling it it's actually a romance trope that i don't like so um i really was not expecting it and that trope is like an automatic no-go for me so unfortunately um this had it and i wasn't a fan of the ending so um i honestly was really enjoying my time until about page 150 or so and this is only about 220 pages so just the ending really soured my feelings on the book i was enjoying the lead up but unfortunately just just had some tropes that I was not a fan of, which does in fact make me a little bit nervous because while I did enjoy Dark Harvest well enough, um, I didn't really like this one and I haven't had a book yet really wow me. Um, and I wanted to have one of those for the first day of fall. So um, I'm not exactly too sure what I'm going to continue reading. I mean, I know I'm going to continue reading from a Buick 8, um, but I'm only on page 17 in it right now so i don't have anything to say about it but i just um i i'm very nervous that i'm picking not the best books for this readathon so um i might have a little come to moment and um try and figure out like what i want to pick up next and really try to um turn things around for myself in this readathon um because just unfortunately very disappointing so um i feel like this is on standby uh, it's like a good old reliable i feel like this is probably going to be middle of the road stephen king um i guess i, I never say never right because i was not expecting christine to be in my top five of stephen king but here we are from a buick eight reliable author i've loved them in the past so obviously <laughs> um but we have this on the back burner i'm gonna keep chipping through on that um other than that i'm not sure what i'm going to pick up next so you'll find out in the b-roll footage when i find out because i just don't know i don't know what to do the stakes are very high so um hopefully hopefully the next book we can get it started it's a little bit better the night is still young like i said it's just nine o'clock so we've got a long time to go and um yeah we're gonna think positive we're gonna find a really good book we're gonna knock it out of the park with our next selection i'll talk to you with another update in a couple hours or so Good morning time check friends it is now it is now 5 29 a.m clearly i am not as capable as um i used to be at all nighters so um i did fall asleep from like midnight to five um and we're we're back at it back at it again this morning working through two books at the moment um and they are going a little bit better than my last book was which is good um the first one is strega by joanne leke home and that one is um kind of dark academia adjacent about a group of young women who travel to this isolated hotel in the middle of nowhere and they um are getting this hotel ready for guests that never show up it seems and then when they do there's a grand party one of these young women wind up missing and it's a mystery it's a, a gothic mystery it's kind of dark academia adjacent with the theming and the tone so that's been going pretty well and then for my physical book i actually found another book that i've been reading on my phone 
on Libby and that would actually be one of the paperbacks from Hell um, from Grady Hendrix because um, like I said last book didn't go so well I was trying to find a good balance and while I was enjoying Strega um, that one was a little too high conceptual for um, when I was when I was getting a little bit tired there so um, enjoying Strega I'm about 30% of the way through that one and then the next one which is one of the paperbacks from Hell um, the imprint by um, Grady Hendrix I believe who is helping republish some older horror books is The Reaping by Bernard Taylor and this is about a painter who goes to a mysterious um, manor to paint a portrait of one of the manor's inhabitants and weird things start happening. So I'm 20% of the way through that one as well. I anticipate being able to finish one of those within the next few hours. Um, I haven't decided yet or not um, if I'm going to add on more time um, based on the five hours that I did sleep. So um, yeah, I will let you all know a little bit later, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go try and wake up a little bit get to reading and I will talk to you all later. I'm feeling, um, since my partner is very wonderful and he is actually, um, he's just been gaming so he went to bed when he noticed I was asleep um, and we woke up together at five, um, take care of the dogs together and then um, he's just gonna be playing some Baldur's Gate while I'm reading and we're gonna parallel play in the same room. So um, he's gonna be playing some video games. So I do think I'm gonna start off the morning not with my audio book, but with the physical book. Um, oh, my dog just decided to lay down on the tripod so that's why the angle slightly shifted. Um, okay. But yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to start my morning off with The Reaping by Bernard Taylor, a book that came out in the 80s and was recently republished. So um, I'm, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued by it. It's a slow burner so far, but um, it's pretty short. It's about 200 pages. So I think I should finish it this morning and I will talk to you all later when I've finished a book and I'm a little bit more awake. Okay, an official good morning from the second day of the 24 hour readathon. Um, yeah, I, I can't even remember. I know I did an update last night slash this morning. I don't remember um, what I said in there because I was very tired, but um, I did end up falling asleep at like midnight. I slept until about five. Um, I tried to get up and start reading again. And I think I only read about 30 minutes or so before falling back asleep. Clearly staying up for 24 consecutive hours is just not something that I am built for anymore, um, which is fine. But um, I was considering whether or not to add more time onto the reading vlog or not. And um, I think I am just because I haven't really found a winner yet. The two books that I read, one was okay, one I didn't like. I, I, want, I want a better reading experience. So even though I did sleep more than five hours, I'm just gonna go ahead and add the five hours back on the clock from when I was sleeping from midnight to 5 a.m. So, um, and I did start those hours at 10 a.m. today, which was like pretty much when I woke up the second time. So it is 11.23 right now. As you can see, I am currently almost right in the middle of Strega. I would say definitely this book is more of a gothic mystery um, and like dark academia adjacent as opposed to horror, but I just felt like because of the last two, I just wanted to switch things up a little bit. So I'm about 50% of the way through that one and it is a shorter audiobook. So I've got about two more hours left if I listen to it on normal time speed, which I don't normally do, so. I am enjoying that. It is very like purple prose, very um, literary, lots of description. So um, I think I did a really good job actually picking out two concurrent books to read during this. The other one that I talked about is um, a paperbacks from hell reprint and that is The Reaping by Bernard Taylor. This originally came out in the 80s um, and it follows a painter who gets commissioned um, given an exorbitant sum of money that he cannot refuse um, to go to this manor to paint one of the people who live inside it. Um, things start going 
very strange um, very quickly so that one definitely is more while there is description in it it is like more straightforward so I think those two really play well off of each other and um, I'm still about I think 30 okay 32 percent of the way through the reaping so um, I'm making my way through both of them and if I finish both of them I'll pick up from a Buick 8 again I think because um, with the five hours added on I'm gonna end this readathon at 3 so it's about 1130 I feel like I feel like that's possible um, and I know I'm bending the rules but it's you know it's my own readathon so I feel like I can do that um, and and kind of give some more coherent thoughts about the books that I'm currently reading and hopefully hopefully find one that um, I like just a little bit more um, than the two books that I have read so far for this vlog. So definitely another laid back day. It's actually better weather today than it was yesterday. Um, marginally it's raining it's cooler outside um, than yesterday which got to like 90 degrees so um, right now I have you know I have time to read I do have some work that I have to do in between reading um which is time sensitive but that shouldn't be too much of an issue um but yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna go get to reading hopefully I can finish Estrega um and come back in an hour or so and give you another reading update happy second official day of fall by the way <laughs> officially reached the end of my 24 hour readathon. I did manage to finish those two books that I was talking about and thankfully those last two books definitely ended up enjoying a lot better than the first two books which is awesome. So let's talk about them before I wrap up this vlog. So the first book that I finished was Strega and I mentioned before this is a gothic, I hesitate to call it thriller, I think Storygraph lists it as a thriller, I think that's kind of the wrong mindset to go into but a gothic mystery and also just an exploration of womanhood and expectations on young girls. We're nine girls or young women, like they're all on the cusp of womanhood. They all take a summer job at a very strange establishment. Um, they have bonds that grow deeper and deeper because they're all in this together. And then one day one of them mysteriously vanishes and the rest of the young women have to kind of deal with that and the repercussions of that. And um, just there's some beautiful prose in here about being a woman um, the expectations of being a woman. This is definitely like a very prose heavy book um, and it's definitely one where it is more of an internal book rather than external when it comes to the plot and the action that's happening. So know that going in. Um, it definitely was one that I was struggling with when I was trying to read it very very early this morning but I read it this morning when I was a little bit more awake and really ended up enjoying it. Um, I kind of compare it to maybe like Vita Nostra 
extra. Like it's the prose is very interesting. It's very, very flowery. I really enjoyed it. I had a good experience reading it, but um, I think if you are an action driven reader, this one is just going to lose you. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I thought there were a lot of beautiful quotes in here. And again, it wasn't horror, but honestly, I think like dark academia, the things that happen in there are horrific, but just like the dark academia, gothic um, mystery of it all, I felt like was definitely, it's definitely a good atmospheric fall piece, um, just because of the things that are being discussed, even though I don't think it takes place necessarily in the fall, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and I probably would recommend via audiobook. It just, it was very pleasant to listen to. Um, and then the next book that I picked up was The Reaping and you know, this one I think is going to push me down a rabbit hole of checking out a lot of the other paperbacks from hell that have been reprinted because I had a whole lot of fun with this. Um, I, this was just so beautifully like a product of its time in terms of like tropes and such. Um, and in terms of just like the way the horror was written and I just, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. There's probably not a movie adaptation, but this is one where you could read it and like you could visualize like the 80s campy horror like movie edition of this book. Um, so I think that'd be fun, but it was, this one was very fun. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure it got compared to in the day um, to like Rosemary's Baby Beats Hill House. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've given the synopsis of both of these books like multiple times, but you know, it's definitely got that kind of almost sort of a gothic structure as well, where um, someone enters into a very secluded place where weird things are happening. And even if you try and leave, you know, these things might follow you and um, you're never really truly out of the situation until you resolve it. So um, I had a lot of fun and honestly, I'm going to see if my library has any more of these paperbacks from hell because it was fun to read. Um, it definitely, definitely a good pick for a readathon. Um, it just, I flew through it. I think it's about 220 pages. Um, and definitely, I think this one was the one that took me the least amount of time to read because I just, I flew through it and it was fun. And there was like a little twist at the end, which based on the way the rest of the story was going, I just didn't assume that there would be a twist. So that was kind of fun as well. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. Definitely will be checking out more paperbacks from hell throughout this horror season because it was a really good time. So um, I know I did mention multiple times about From a Buick 8 by Stephen King. Once I had finished The Reaping, I knew that like I shouldn't try and pick up another book because I think I finished with maybe like 20 minutes to spare on my timer of time. Obviously I could have gone more if I wanted to but I think you know I think it's time to conclude this experiment and to just say you know let's stick with maybe weekend vlogs or weekly reading vlogs and not try and stay up so late because I am tired. I am tired. I had a lot of fun doing it. Definitely not something that like is sustainable for me to try and do maybe more than once a year, but um, I did have fun and I'm about like 20 pages into From a Be Okay. And you know what? I am enjoying it. I'll probably continue reading this throughout the week, but I did just want to mention since I had talked about it multiple times in this vlog, um, I just, I barely cracked like the surface. Like I think I got to the introduction. It seems like half of this is going to take place as like one of the main characters telling a story to someone. So um, yes, I'm, you know, I'm intrigued. It's, it looks like it's another demonic enchanted car story. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be optimistic because I love Christine um, and looking forward to reading this one in the week to come. But that is going to be it for my 24 hour reading vlog. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope you all had a lot of fun watching it. If you made it this far in the video, please be sure to give a thumbs up, leave your favorite fall or autumnal emoji down below. Subscribe to my channel for all the cozy gaming and bookish content. Stay safe, keep it creepy, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!